All right, my people, listen up. Good morning to you. Don't mind my eyes either, man. Everybody always in the comments comment about my eyes in the morning. Anyway, I just want to give my quick opinion on this James Harden thing. It comes out yesterday from Brian Windhorst that there is an appetite around the league to give James Harden a four-year, $200 million contract. There is an appetite around the league. The first question you ask me is, should the Sixers give James Harden a four-year, $200 million contract? The answer is... <laughs> Fuck no, dude. Fuck no. No! Come on, man. Come on, dude. What are we really talking about here? If Daryl Morey gives James Harden a $200 million contract, I will retire from covering the 76ers on YouTube. I swear to God, bro. I, I There's no way you could put me through. There's no way you can put me through four more years of roly-poly, driving to the rim, hooking the arm, throwing the ball in the air, rolling into the first row and yelling at the officials, and, and, and not getting leaving the team in a 4-on-5 situation on the other end, there's no way you can do that to me for four more years. The guy's 33 and he can't get he, he, he can't get up anymore. Pause. You think he's going to get up when he's 37? Pause. Stop it. Now look, I do want to say this. James Harden is still a very valuable basketball player. James Harden is still an elite facilitator. James Harden can still play a wonderful, wonderful role on a basketball team in the NBA. James Harden can play a great role in a basketball team for four more years, but he cannot be a number two scoring option at this point. James Harden has to be in more of a Chris Paul role for the next four years for him to be worth 30 million a year. 50? 50? Come on, son. Come on. I just, I'm just praying to God every day this summer that the Sixers don't do that. That somebody else steps up and offers that. But it, but it's, but we're in the worst situation. For people that don't want James Harden to get a $200 million contract from the 76ers, guess what? You would have to not have Daryl Morey be your GM for you to feel safe about the Sixers not giving James Harden a $200 million contract. There is definitely reason to be fearful when Daryl Morey is your GM. But you just you can't strap the Sixers like that. You got to get rid of the Tobias Harris contract. You got There's a lot of things you got to do. You can't strap the team like that. You cannot give James Harden a four-year $200 million contract. And I hope the reports that he wants to go to Houston are right. I hope that happens. Go ahead. Toodaloo. See you later. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. Now listen, this also. The Boston Celtics are proving how bad the Sixers really were this season. And this whole season, you know, the fanboys calling me negative or whatever, but I was right because it wasn't hard to see. It wasn't hard to see. The Sixers were old, slow, short, unathletic. Uh, you know, they, they were they were one of the worst teams in the league in rebounding. They were one of the worst teams in the league in transition defense. They were one of the worst teams in the league in, in a couple of categories that championship-level teams are not one of the worst teams in the league in. So no matter how good Joel Embiid was in a regular season, no matter how good they looked at times, you kind of knew in the back of your mind they're they're not one of the elite teams in the NBA. They're just not. You 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 had to kind of know that in the back of your mind. People didn't want to accept that because people want to believe that their team is the best team and that's you know whatever. They had a lot of issues this season roster wise. Now was it was it Doc Rivers not playing certain guys? Doc Rivers choosing forty year olds over twenty five year old athletes probably had a lot to do with it. Thankfully, he's out the window. 
out the door. But they just weren't that good roster-wise. And we knew that. We knew that from the beginning of the season. We knew that. So you go into the Celtics series, and the Boston Celtics had some bad games through the regular season, lost to the Orlando Magic three times. They gave up two games to the Atlanta Hawks, who were a play-in team, who the Sixers just smacked around with Jaden Springer and Mac McClung. And I said, this Celtics team is not that good. That's the reason I was saying I was starting to believe that the 76ers could get past the second round this year. Is because I thought the Celtics had just as many issues as the Sixers did. Or more. I thought that from the beginning of the season. I didn't think Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum really make sense on the same team. Then Boston went on a serious run throughout the season. They looked very deep. They looked very strong in all areas. And I started to say the Boston Celtics are the juggernauts. But then I saw those couple of games throughout the regular season that they lost to bad teams. And then I saw that Atlanta Hawks series. And I said, wait a minute. This team is very vulnerable. This team is very beatable. That's why I was saying the Sixers could beat the Celtics in the second round. The Sixers go seven with the Boston Celtics. That made people start to think, wow, this 76ers team is actually great and is a championship contender. And people that are saying, don't blow it up, they're like, you just went to seven games with the best team in the league. They're not the best team in the league. Stop it. You only went seven games with the Boston Celtics because the Boston Celtics are not that good. You were just worse, as I predicted the whole season, that the Sixers weren't very good. So that's what I'm saying. You went seven games with the Boston Celtics. Boston Celtics aren't done. Now they're getting their asses handed to them by Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat, which is just proving me right once again that the Sixers could have beat the Celtics, but not because the Sixers are a championship contending team. It's because the Celtics are frauds. And I'm actually glad, I'm 100% glad, I'm 100% glad the Sixers did not win that series because if the Sixers did not, if the Sixers won that series, made it to the Eastern Conference Finals and got smacked by the Heat the way the Celtics are getting smacked by the Heat right now, that would be an excuse for this organization to move forward with the same things. That would be an excuse for this organization to move forward, to run it back, do the same thing. They wouldn't have fired Doc. Nothing would have happened. I said I had a video earlier this season that said I would rather lose in the second round so major changes happen to this team. People could not believe that I said that. People could not believe that I said, you, well, you would rather lose? What kind of fan are you? This team needs major changes. And you had to lose in the second round again for those changes to occur. You were four minutes away from getting out of the second round. The Sixers were four minutes away from bringing back the exact same team with the same coach. They were four minutes away in game six. Thankfully, the basketball gods answered the call. The Sixers collapsed. They fired the coach who's been running his ideas into the ground for three years. And now they have some other major changes to make. But you can't give James Harden a $200 million contract. You can't do it. Peace.